Germans are a proud people with deep roots in fighting. Whether fending off the Romans at the Rhine or fighting the French against Napoleon III, their tough, efficient manner is something that has developed over many years, but their prevalence in boxing is rather lacking compared to their accomplishments in other sports. With the exception of some brilliant fighters like Max Schmeling and Henry Mask, the gap in generations doesn't shine the most spectacular light on boxing in Germany. But there was once a time when one man desired to ramp up and showcase Germany's boxing talent to the world. Born in Austria, he would write in his memoir of how he thought no sport demanded greater focus and produced a better man. His name was Adolf Hitler. Boxing in Nazi Germany was used as a means of promoting the state, as a tool to perfect the human body. This wasn't just done in boxing, but in other sports as well. The Olympics was to be the showcase of Hitler's philosophy on the training of athletes in the German nation. He had a particular interest in promoting boxing. As in Mein Kampf, he would state, There is no sport that so much as this one promotes the spirit of attack, demands lightning decisions, and trains the body into steel dexterity. In his mind, he was preparing his people for the inevitable war with Bolshevism. And to do this, people would need to be trained to the highest stock of order. The Nazi government would pour tons of Reichsmarks into training and developing the fighters in their nation, as well as building top-of-the-line training facilities in Berlin and other cities of Germany. In the Olympic Games of 1936, the Nazi propaganda machine was ready to take full effect, and Hitler expected nothing less than a dominant medal performance. In boxing, the Germans fared well, but did not achieve the dominant sweep Hitler had hoped. They won two gold medals, two silver, and one bronze. Two of the medalists, Joseph Minor and Michael Maroc, would die on the Eastern Front, and heavyweight gold medalist Herbert Runge would go on to have a less than stellar pro career, finishing in 1949 with a record of five wins, 14 losses, and six draws. In another interesting affair, German boxer Max Schmeling engaged in a Nazi versus America build bout with current world champion Joe Lewis. The two had met previously, with Schmeling getting the better of the affair, thanks to his masterful boxing and well-timed right hands. The rematch was to be Lewis's attempt to erase his only career blunder, and Schmeling's attempt to capture the belt for the German nation, or this was at least how the Nazis saw it. In the rematch, Schmeling was not able to use the same strategy as the first, as Lewis had planned to end the fight quickly. And after blitzing Schmeling in one round with three knockdowns, Lewis was still the world's heavyweight champion. This was an embarrassing moment for the Nazis. As soon as it became clear that Schmeling was on his way out, they cut all radio transmissions of the fight across the country, not allowing Germans to hear of how a stout Aryan boxer had fallen to the black American in less than three minutes. Schmeling was hated in the US and by the Allies at large during the war. As he was seen as a champion of the Nazis' cause, this caricature was unfair and undeserving. As Schmeling was no fan of Hitler or the Nazis, and the cordial relations he kept with them was merely to protect himself and his family. In fact, he refused to outright join the National Socialist Party, and shot down Goebbels' advice to fire his Jewish-American manager Joe Jacobs. And in an act of stunningly brave humanitarianism, he saved the life of two young Jewish boys. Both were sons of his friend. During the Crystal Knock, when German pogroms were rounding up Berlin's remaining Jews, Max would hide the boys in his hotel room, instructing that no one was to bother him, as he felt gravely ill. After the streets had cleared and tensions had cooled, he would help transport the boys out of the country into the US, putting his own life in danger. Anyone caught associating or helping Jews would be executed or imprisoned. This defiance would not go unnoticed, and Max was drafted as a paratrooper and sent on a number of suicide missions. Amazingly, he would survive until the end of the war and live a full life as a successful businessman, passing at the age of 99 in 2005. Today, he is revered as one of Germany's proudest sports icons, not just for his accomplishments in boxing, but because of his greater impact on the world. To Hitler and the Nazis, boxing was just another tool to be used to enforce their vision of a super German state and people, training them to be efficient fighters in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Through their efforts, they produced some amazing athletes and showcased the results that vigorous training delivers. But the more compelling story lies with one man who refused to bend the knee to a tyrant and kept true to his own values. Rest in peace, Maximilian Schmeling.